I'm Debbie and this is The Book Ponder. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Today I wanted to talk about the book We Are All Made of Stars by author Rowan Coleman. Maybe Rowan, I'm not sure. Rainbow Rowell has me very confused. Anyway, this is the story of Stella who is a nurse in London and she is married to Vincent. Vincent has just returned from Afghanistan as an amputee and Stella and Vincent are having some struggles in their marriage and because of that Stella works nights at a hospice and she has lots of different patients one of the patients she has is Hope and Hope is a young girl who is about 21 she has cystic fibrosis and she has gotten a very serious lung infection which has landed her in the hospice. The book really alternates among a few different characters and one of those is Hope, one is Vincent, and one is Stella the nurse. And then we also have this other guy, Hugh, who is a 30 something year old um, man who works at a museum of some type. And we're, we aren't quite sure how he fits into the narrative um, in the beginning, but uh, most of the book is Stella and then Hope with a few by Vincent and Hugh. Also at the beginning of each chapter, the end, depending how you look at it, is sort of a most of the time unrelated letter, although occasionally it does relate to the chapter that you've just read. Um, a letter that Stella has supposedly written for one of her patients that is their last letter to their loved one. And as a hospice nurse, she's often called upon to help them say what they've run out of time to say in person or they were never able to say in person. Um, I will say the very, the book opens with a letter and the very first letter made me tear up and cry. And so this book is quite emotional at times. However, it is also very funny. I thought that there was a lot of humor, but then I tend to have a, a dark sense of humor sometimes. I, I think it is in those situations where sometimes you can, if you can laugh at yourself and laugh at the circumstances, things can be funny. Um, I just thought this novel was amazing. I had never heard of this author. I'd never heard of this book before. Again, it was a random library find, scroll in the library site as I do. and. I was just um, immediately moved by this novel. One of the things I thought of immediately was how easily the author included diversity in this book. Now it's set in London, as far as I know all the characters in the book are white, but at the same time there are diversity, there's diversity in other ways just woven into the book. You know, a lot of the letters are from a man professing his love to another man or a woman professing her love and life or about a woman loving another woman. Um, there is Vincent who is Stella's husband who is an amputee and is trying to learn to live his life. Um, there is uh, Hope who is uh, chronically ill since she was a child. She's had cystic fibrosis. She has her best friend Ben who is sort of gender ambiguous, um, doesn't dress like boys normally dress, and is um, outside of the sphere of, of what others might perceive to be normal for him. And I just thought it was just, you know, none of the book was, the book wasn't about that. I mean, like I said, those letters aren't really connected to the, um, the book all the time they're just sort of there to re-emphasize you know that this is Stella's life going on and these are the things that she has to write and that she deals with and and also they add another element to the book which make it really really interesting but it's just it's always refreshing and sometimes surprising to me when I come across a book that just doesn't apologize for being different you know I I felt that way when I read we are the ants uh, recently where um, it is about two boys being in love or one boy who is gay and primarily about him and then his other relationships and there was no apologies there was no bullying because he was gay I mean he was bullied for other reasons but he wasn't bullied for being gay he his parents 
didn't shun him. Everybody just accepted this relationship like a normal relationship. There was no second guessing, no questioning, no... I mean, like, if you read that book and you did not know that gay people in our society are not treated equally and not looked at as being equally in all situations by society, you wouldn't know that from reading this book. I thought that was really amazing and interesting that I thought this book, We Are All Made of Stars, also did well was it's just so incorporated into just everyday life that there, there is it's not an issue it was just it just was I found that very refreshing to change topics a little bit one of the other things I found really interesting in reading this book was the spaces that we create between ourselves and others and I think you know that was one of those things where especially the relationship between Stella and her husband how Stella worked at night and she voluntarily worked a night shift even when she didn't have to because her and Vincent couldn't share the house at the same time really and a lot of this you know this book is about love and loss and you know it's the regrets and and the choices we make and how we choose or don't choose to move toward another person. And I think that, that that was illustrated through the letters that people wrote where we didn't have to really know anything about their life. We just suddenly got this one page little story of like, we could see their regret, we could see their fear, or we could see when they chose to move toward someone and when they thanked them for the wonderful life that they led. and. I think that that was very interesting and then, you know, I tend to enjoy books where they take something like that and they show it over and over again in different ways and I think one of the ways they did that was through the letters, one of the ways was through the patients who were actually dying in the relationships, one of the ways was through Hope who was 21 years old and felt like she had been given a death sentence from the time she was young and really had to choose whether or not she was going to embrace life or keep hiding away inside um, her friend Ben who also had his own struggles and, and showed her another way that she could move through the world and then we had Stella and Vincent um, who also had their own troubles and had to decide whether to move toward each other and move away from each other and then we have the story of Hugh with his own choices about whether to move toward or away from other people. And, you know, I, ju I just think it's very interesting to explore one issue like this on different levels. So that, you know, if you, if you don't get it one way, you're, hopefully you will get it another way. I think Celeste Ng does this really well in, in her book Little Fires Everywhere. Um, I thought this author, Rowan Coleman, did it very well in this book that, um, you know, we have more choices than we think we do a lot of times and um, we can choose to embrace others and embrace life and embrace our desires and our wishes instead of just embracing our fear. And I think that's my third point too, was just the fear that stops us from doing so much in the world, you know, and in this book, we got to see the results of fear. Fear of leaving the house, fear of embracing life. I mean, Hope was very afraid of risking her health, but at the same time, I got the feeling as a reader that it was a rationalization for her fear of letting go of life, that to embrace life meant to love and to enjoy and to make relationships with the other people and then knowing that she could very well die younger than normal, she would have to leave all of those people behind. And I thought it was interesting how the author chose to take someone like Hope who at 21 says she's in probably a midlife, if not later in her life, and juxtaposed them with other people, both younger and older than her, who were at the end of their life. And 
to take their fear or their lack of fear and sort of juxtapose it with hope's fear of um, having relationships and embracing life. And there is a great scene with her and a younger girl at the hospice. Um, and I think that that relationship, I don't want to give all the spoilers away for what happened there, but that that relationship was just beautiful. And, you know, this book made me cry over and over again because it was so touching and so just life affirming and reinforced sort of those things we all know that we can't let fear stop us from doing what we want to do yet over and over again we do I do you know it's whether it's stopping you from starting a booktube channel or it's stopping you from leaving the house and you just want to stay inside and read which is me a lot of times or it's stopping you from writing your book or making a movie or running a marathon or cooking something for dinner whatever it is that you're afraid of you know that what are the alternatives you know like I think that's that was what was really interesting to me to see the letters at the end of people's lives is like what they said and what they did and I've always had that sort of thought that I would love to leave a letter, you know, this says sort of like the very first letter talks about how to work the washing machine, you know, that that's those sort of practical things that those of us who are more the caretaker spirits worry about other people, can they function for themselves, you know, and there's so many things to worry about and fear for, and it's like, just enjoy life, I mean, I don't know how to say it over and over without giving so many spoilers away of, you know, not spoilers really, but like telling you all the details that you could read for yourself in the book. But it's like, I think the author did an amazing job with the different letters. Like those were my favorite thing, but then I like letters in books. I like diary entries and things of that sort, although there weren't any of those in here, but I enjoy a book with filled with different types of writing and different points of view and I enjoy all that so um, I really liked this one um, I liked having different kinds of letters with different kinds of lives that through just a page here and a page there we got to see so many different ways that lives had played out and that at the end of people's lives what they worried about and what they longed for what they wished had happened what they were glad happened what they were sad happened what they regretted happening and so many different ways you know that we torture ourselves in this world of wishing we had done something differently and you know the the fact is, is that we have the choice we can choose to make changes we can choose to step forward or retreat or hide or step out into the light and I just thought this author did a fantastic job if you haven't heard of this book before check it out um, I will go and look at the other at the author's other books because evidently she has several other books and like I said I've never heard of her thank you for stopping by hopefully this is just a quick video and um, check out this book thanks <music>